Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk to you guys about stores and kind of what I saw today in the stores. Some news articles where they say shoppers are pulling back even on groceries as they feel stressed about their budgets. We're talking about stores that are not getting in the amount of clients and customers that they need. They're revamping their stores to try to make them look better so that they can pull you in and hopefully get you to buy more. They're changing their store layout for different items like this. So you guys, I actually went into town today, had to run some errands, and I took some time just to look around. And I want to tell you some of the things that I saw, including I visited my real estate office, which I have not been there in a few months, and it was like a ghost town. Talked to some real estate agents, and I want to get into that. So you guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Financial Prepper, Chris and Stacy. I'm Stacy. I think I just heard Chris pull up on the golf cart. Maybe he'll come in and join me. And you guys, let's get into it. All right. So I want to start with Target. CEO Brian Cornell says shoppers are pulling back even on groceries as they feel stressed about their budgets. In an interview today, he stated that the retailer has posted seven consecutive quarters of declining sales of discretionary items such as apparel and toys and foods of dollars and units. And hey, he did. Hey, babe. You want to come join me? But even in food and beverage categories over the last few quarters, the units, the number of items they're buying has been declining. Have a sip. So I was telling them today I went into town and I started noticing some different things. Hey, everybody. Hey, I know. I caught him. I snagged him, got him on the What's on going the, on? So today I went to the store. Remember, I had to go to town today and run yep. errands and different things like that. I hadn't had a chance to talk to you because you've been outside working. I noticed some things in the stores, different changes. I talked to some of the managers and employees and different things. I also went to my real estate office. It was a ghost town. She, they said, the girl, Jean, at the front desk, said, she, she said, blah. She said, I'm surprised they're even keeping me on. Yeah, uh, we talked to another real estate agent that said it hasn't been this bad since 2008. Yep, we sure did. So I found some articles, and I was going to talk about it a little bit. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. So this is this is Target, you guys, and they're saying that their the retailer has cut its full year sales and profit expectations in August, despite a growing number of economists saying, you know, that oh, it's going to be scrapping the calls for a recession. The government's going to get better, and all this kind of stuff. They're being realistic, and here's some of the reason why they're saying, during the woohoo bat flu and everybody got locked down, there was a bottleneck. And they could not get the merchandise that they needed in. Well, then when they finally got it in, it was a flood of merchandise, and then they had too much. And you guys, I saw this. I would come home from, like, TJ Maxx and Ross, and I would tell Chris, I'm like, they're literally taking things out of the box, not even putting it on the rack, and immediately slapping a for sales member with a reduced sticker on it. And I was like, why are you guys doing this? They said, because we just finally got these items in. Yeah, that was the, the kink in the supply chain yep. catching up. And we talked about that, the glut yep. of goods that was on the way. Yep. So today I was at the grocery stores, and I went to a couple of them, Sam's and Kroger's being two specific ones, and I noticed the store, the, the aisles are wider, really big in Kroger right now. And I actually talked to one of the ladies, and she said, you could see it on the lines, you could see it on the floor where it used to be, and they've moved it over. And she said that they're, the high-end goods, gone. They're completely revamping their store. They're doing lower-end goods, and they're trying to get people in. There was management there like crazy today. Everybody having meetings, trying to figure out apparently how they can make Kroger be more profitable. That's exactly what they said they were going to do. They said they were going to yep. get rid of the high-end things. Yep, and they're doing it. Yep. Now so I went around the corner, and remember I said that possibly they were going to do a store within a store? Well, they did it. So there's a certain part of stores now that when you walk into that little area, if you pick up anything in that, uh, that area, they're going to check your cart. You have to either purchase it right there, or you have they take it from you, and they put it at the front, and when you check out, at the end, you give them your name, and they go pull the items. So they're doing what they said they were going to do. And the the girl told me today, she said, the theft has been through the roof. Was it six months lag? And yeah, it's about six, eight months. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it said, you may need to lean into that mic more, because I know sometimes I can't hear your voice. The CEO of, of Target, he said, we have taken a much more conservative approach in planning inventory this year. Because we're going to lean into these big seasonal moments and play to win. So, you guys, this is typically when, whoops, 
got a little crooked there, typically when they start spending most of their money. And you guys, I was just telling you, I, I made a joke at the beginning of the video, driving home, that big billboard I saw, I saw two, three of them, get your holiday loan, apply now. Because oh. guess what? They just want you to go more in debt. And I told you guys the other day, I was at TJ Maxx. Yeah, and they're doing layaway again now. So that used to be back years ago when interest rates were high and all that kind of stuff. Um, but now going interest to Walmart. Are, uh, they've kind of dogged them off for the moment. Well, I remember as a kid growing up, my parents would put stuff on layaway because they didn't have the money. And that was the only way they could do it. And then it went away because, you know, things were probably more affordable. Um, right. But I saw that come back the other day. Layaway. Mm -hmm, I sure did. Get in debt and pay as you go. Yeah, this is a uh, millennials. Millennials are have most of the credit card debt. They do the highest um, percentage and the most of all. It's just uh, keep going. I, I like I said, guys. This is part of it. I say that all the time, mm -hmm. but it's just slow. It's a lot slower than I could ever imagine. But all the things that we warned about are starting to happen and it's just a six or eight month lag and sometimes it's a year or two lag you know we sold our rental properties early uh and now home prices are starting to come down a little bit but you know we just don't have timing keep going all right so let's talk about walmart next so walmart has actually done better than target if you guys have seen their earnings income but they are still struggling matter of fact it's to the point of nine billion dollars they're getting ready to invest in revamping these stores, as I talked about, making the aisles wider, making it look more pretty. They're doing their best, they said, to entice clients and customers in so that they will buy more than just the necessities. Because they said everybody is not buying anything more than what they barely need. Now, you've got a few that are, I'm sure, still putting on credit cards and all that kind of stuff. But they said it's mainly discretionary purchases. So they are going and opening the reopening 117 stores and spending nine billion dollars into making them look all pretty and interesting enough here's another little tip and you know this because we just did with brookshire's pharmacy the pharmacies in the in a lot of the stores used to be on the side toward the back various places like that if you notice now well brookshire's just got bought out by walgreens but even in walmart they're moving them to the front they're creating a little setting area and they are doing their best to get you in because if they can get you in the door while you're waiting on your prescription, hopefully you will go shopping. I mean, if you go to places like Rite Aid and Walgreens right now, you maybe have one employee. The only employees are back there in the back at the pharmacy, and it's mainly self-checkout. Right. And you said people are buying discretionary goods, at, but they're still buying them on credit. A lot of them. A lot of people are, are buying, you know, low-end products, fuel, rent on debt. You know, they're, they're, they're just accumulating debt that they'll never be able to pay off. This is a trap. Do whatever you have to do. I, I don't know. I talk about side hustles all the time. I try to bring up things to negate this, but there's a lot of people that are doing it, and, and it's getting worse every day. It's it's everything we read and we watch, uh, it points to a massive collapse, one like nobody's ever seen. But keep going. So I, I got to talk to a lot of people today, and sometimes I have to just run in and run out for errands, and I don't actually get to talk to And I hadn't got to talk to you either about this, but it was like a tension that was in the air today talking to, to these people. It's like they felt something was coming. Even several of them said this is what they were seeing. You know, They were seeing they were less luxury spending. And they were actually telling me some of this. People they saw were on more credit card debt. Several even people told me they knew people that had stopped paying their credit card debt different things like that. And they talked about the car loans. So it was conversations instead of just looking at me like a deer in the headlights. It was actually people going, yeah, I'm seeing this. And then we had another walk off just the other day for another drugstore. They're not union workers, but still you guys, if you need something from a pharmacy and you go there, there's a good chance that you will have very little employees there. Pharmageddon. That's what they're calling it. Yep. Yeah. That's uh, guys, if you don't have your meds, if you need meds, uh, do whatever it takes. Uh, do the best you can because a lot of meds, you know, the doctors hold pretty tight to, you know, to the chest. But uh, it's time. It's time to gather. It's it's always been time to prep. But you know, if you're behind, don't worry. You probably still got a little more time. And meds are kind of hard to just stock up on real quick. I know you can get fish meds, mm -hmm. 
plenty of sites to get uh, fish meds. I'm not telling you to do that, but uh, <laughs> just get what you need. Now's the time. I agree. And one more thing I'll go on. Ashley, no, and Alicia. Thanks, Alicia. She actually reached out to me, and she said that there's a place called alldaychemist.com. She said that you're able to get some stuff. It's an online pharmacy. She's been using it. She sent me an email, and she said, hey, next time you guys talk about that, mention it. She goes, because I've used it, and it's been really great. So you might just check them out. I thought I would. But the last thing I want to talk about is real estate. I walked into my real estate office today, you guys, and it was like a ghost town. There was one agent there. No, I saw two. I saw two. That's it. I asked the girl at the front desk, I said, is it any better at the other office? And she said, not much. She said, I cannot even believe they're keeping me on at this point. And I said, so there's no sales. And then I talked to another agent the other day, the one I was telling you about, mm -hmm. and he said he had not seen it this bad since 2008. Some of these agents I know are in doing investment properties, are, so they're able They've to... They've been doing it for 30 years. Yeah, so they're, they're able yeah. to like stay afloat. You know, They manage some properties or whatever for other people, um, so that's how they're able, but they said... Their sellers aren't selling because if they sell, they make a profit, but they have no place to go. And um, th they said the sales were just way, way down. It's like a ghost town. So, you guys, that's boots on the ground from a real estate agent here in North Louisiana. Yeah, well, it's a strange situation because people, it, it's just not moving. No. You know, uh, I think this is the calm before the storm where somebody has to move. And they have to take a loss, and then oh, you're that talking about somebody the losing their job. Down. Oh, yeah, anything. Okay. Any, that's the number one reason is when people move for a job, and that brings the comps down. The neighbors see that. Okay, bring it down. You know, mm -hmm. and a lot of people bought at high prices. A lot of people took out home equity loans at high prices. You know, and now they're not going to be able to recover. They're going to have to write that check at the closing table if they even can. So we're, we're getting ready, and I hope you guys are too. Well, that's when you have to start looking at short sales and all that kind of stuff and see if the bank will work, help you. But anyway, this yeah, is we just... Yeah, need we need to actually make a course on rent. That's yeah. a, uh, how we got into rental properties with nothing out of our pocket, and they actually paid us at closing. That was pretty wild. It, it was. actually worked. It, it was worked. zero down, and we did short sales. And, yeah. yeah, how to find them, how to vet yeah. them. That, that, that time's coming. But until then, hang in there, guys. I asked you today, is, like, is the crash ever going to get here? It's here, but it's not. It's just a strange. It's propped up. It just takes so long. It's just a, a slow-moving train wreck. It's just hard to gauge time. We don't have time. You know, that's, that's the main thing. But hang in there. It's coming. Well, that's just some of the stuff I saw today. So I also saw these articles. So I thought I would just jump online and go, hey, you guys, this is what I'm seeing. And then you walked in. That's awesome. Yes, I did. Yeah. I'll be doing uh, the video on the culvert situation. <laughs> it's been a massive project now, just because I don't know what I'm doing with concrete, building forms and all that. So that's all I have. Is that that's all you it. got? Yeah. You guys have an awesome, awesome day. Later. Bye.